Wainwright's uh, Far Eastern uh, Films, here's the uh, book, published in 1958. The, his boundary goes east of Patterdale towards Horsewater, therefore the northern boundary will be Ulswater, and to the south you've got Windermere. It's a vast area and sparsely uh, populated. Uh, ideal possibly for the lone walker trying to get away from the crowds uh, on the Helvellyn or the Langdow Pikes. In fact, when Wainwright surveyed the uh, scene back in the mid-1950s, he mentions in his notes in the back of the book that from dawn to dusk he hardly ever met a soul. And that's something perhaps we might be able to do today. There is a high street, but you won't find a, a Marks and Spencer there. That is the name given to a Roman road that went from Brum, near Penrith, via Amboside, where there used to be a fort, and it terminated on the Cumbrian coast at um, Ravenglass. Now, if you want to visit um, this area, and you want to get away from the Patterdale area, and we will look at it in this uh, program, but uh, if you really want to get away from things, then take the A592 up to uh, Penrith. Don't take the motorway here, but go down the old road, the A6 to Shap, and there you will find signposts directing you to Horsewater. On the way, you might like to consider visiting Shap Abbey and the tiny little hamlet of Keld, and do pop into its uh, chapel, incidentally. Upon reaching Horsewater, go right to the far end where there is a car park, and now you are really in amidst the wild fells of the area. And they include Kitsley Pike and High Street, but of course, not the High Street we know, that's the name that was given to the fell in recognition of the Roman road that goes across its summit. Our adventure starts at the Glenridding landing stage by Ulswater, but if something less energetic than a fell walk is needed, how about a trip on the steamer? Not far is Glencoyne Park. It was here in 1802 that Wordsworth spotted those daffodils fluttering and dancing in the breeze, and in season, wild daffodils still bloom here. From this magnificent vantage point, we gaze across the misty lake to Place Fell, our first objective in our exploration of the Far Eastern Fells. Further up Patterdale is a second lake, Brother's Water. In the distance, we can see the main road grinding its way over Kirkston Pass, one of the highest in Lakeland. But don't worry, there is an inn at the top. The pass is the boundary between Wainwright's eastern fells on the right and the far eastern fells on the left. Hartsop Dodd is in view with its ridge leading to a snow-capped Cordale Moor. Our quarry is Place Fell, and one of the best climbs from Patterdale is via Bordell Hawes, where the gradients are easier. As height is gained, Look back over the valley to the fantastic prospect of the Eastern Fells. 
Helvellyn is there on the left, and so is Striding Edge with Catstercam peeking over the ridge. In his introduction to Place Fell, Wainwright considered it well favoured for appraising the neighbouring heights. The view from the top is wide-ranging, sweeping in a curve from Brotherswater to Pooley Bridge at the southern tip of Ulswater. If you are in for the long haul or walk, continue down the long spur to Sandwick and return to Patterdale along the shore of Ulswater, but don't expect a level path. It is very uneven. During the descent, the Roman road of High Street is well defined on the horizon as it crosses Lodepot and Weather Hills. In the foreground is Biederfell, ideal for the evening stroll. Now, in the opposite direction, across Ulswater is Sheffield Pike and Galbarrow, with Blencathra in the northern fells peering over the tops. I love the splashes of sunlight in these views. Pure luck, because it had clouded over during the day, but it cleared later. Now pop over the Kirkston Pass, stop at the inn if you wish, before traversing another pass, but this one we walk. Kentmere might be a name familiar to photographers from film days as manufacturers of high quality printing paper. Based at the village of Staveley in South Lakes, the company took the name of the valley that extends several miles from the village into the far eastern fells. Now, near its head is the tiny hamlet of Kentmere, and its church dedicated to St Cuthbert. This is where our next tour commences. Although traversing a pass and not climbing a fell, it does reach 1,475 feet. Lakeland Pass being what they are, it is still rough underfoot, but popular with mountain bikers. Crossing from Kentmere to Troutbeck, walkers can stop and appreciate the contrasting views from the patchwork fields surrounding Kentmere Church to our first glimpse of Windermere. Before leaving Kentmere, do you see the distant fells peering over the ridge? They are not Lakeland Fells, but the Howgills in the Yorkshire Dales National Park, which in recent years has been joined to the Lake District National Park, but administered separately. Descending into Troutbeck, the panorama features the South Lakeland Fells, from Coniston Old Man to Caldell Moor, the view up valley being particularly particularly photogenic, its patchwork of fields bordered by trees completing the scene. Upon reaching the main road, cross to Robin Lane. It starts by the church, by the way. It skirts the lower slopes of Wansfell, which we climb later. As a preface, pause for excellent views down Windermere, and upon reaching a second main road, we can pop into Stagshaw Gardens, especially colourful in spring. Ambleside is a desirable centre for South Lakes. It gets very busy, especially Waterhead, where the Windermere steamers dock. The fell overshadowing the town is Wands Fell, our route of escape. Many tourists manage to struggle up the hill to Stockgill Force, but our feet go further, much further. 
scaling the heights at 1,597 feet. An excellent vantage point for Windermere and the whole compass of Wainwright's Southern Fells. Our track follows Stock Gill, not far from The Struggle, the name given to a very steep and tortuous road from Ambleside to Kirtston Pass. Now our climb is even steeper, but take your time. Yes, it's behind you. The view over Ambleside, don't miss it. The mountain panorama includes the Langdales, Bowfell and Crinkle Crags. And is that scornful pike peeking through the gap, and possibly Great Gable too, anxious not to be left out of the family portrait? Although Wansfell is the true summit, the best views are from the pike. It's only 16 feet lower. Ah, and that is one of my photographers standing in the right place with the lake in his sights. There he is again, but I would imagine that seat is a bit uncomfortable. From here, imagine the South Lakeland Fells arranged in an arc, as if posing for a picture, with Wansfell and Wansfell Pike at the front and in the centre. The Pike has the best views over the graceful sweep of Windermere and into Morecambe Bay. It is possible to descend to Trout Bay. Better is to drop down to Robin Lane again you know, featured earlier, and back to Stankshaw Gardens at Ambleside for a pleasant round trip. Before losing height, gaze once more over Ambleside, but not the high fells in the background, but those that are nearer. These are the central fells, Luffrig and Silver Howe, a delectable area waiting to be explored in my next programme.